This is Mastering Mathematics with your teacher, Karen Weston. Hello everyone. Welcome again to another in the series, Mastering Mathematics. Today we launch our first term and the first class for the new academic year 2013 to 2014. And guess what? No postmortem, no looking back. We have work to do. Okay? And again, I welcome for the new term those students who were transferred from the primary school into the secondary schools. Today, my emphasis will be on that topic in terms of what our students going into the secondary schools and what they think will be at stake for them for mathematics. At the same time, too, I will tell you of some of the things that we are going to be doing for mathematics for the year 2013. As you know, we are still building. We have got to improve upon what we have. And what are we doing? Yes, we are putting resources in place. Again, you will see that we are in a new center. And as such, we are planning on having a full-fledged center for mathematics education and worry in Antigua, Barbuda. Maybe the first for the Caribbean, but it is not new to institutional and academical institutes. What we want to do is to make certain that mathematics students and the general public in Antigua and Barbuda has a place to go where we can inform them about some of the topics that they're having trouble with in mathematics. This is a resource center we will be having tutorials and students will be told about this. We are also making available resources in the fact that the episodes that have been done last year can be had on disc for a little sum at the center and you in your own time can study whatever topic you want. My computer analyst, Mr. Washington, is always looking for new ways from which we can reach our children using um, the computer technology as their playground. And we are going to stick with it. I will tell you right away because parents, I want you to be heavily involved with your child's education. And today, as I said, I'm going to be focusing on the first formers getting into secondary school and thinking that, wow, am I going to be able to handle the mathematics? First of all, you will know that they're using a book called Oxford Mathematics Book One. Oxford Mathematics Book One. The topics are number theory, angles, decimals, and sets. So for them, Entering into the secondary school, their first topic will be numbers. We don't want anything that will shock them, and it's a slow build-up into the process. Everybody knows that for mathematics, it's a field, and as such, it operates like a community. And so what do we have? Yes, we have rules. We have building blocks, we have operations, and we know exactly that they will dictate how mathematics is handled. First thing we want to talk about today then are, number one, the rules that we are talking about that operates the whole paradigm for mathematics. And the first one we can think about so we have told you about resources that we're going to make available. Come down to the center, located at the lower end of New Nevis Street, in the same building with the Directorate of Women Affairs, and you will find us there. Now, let us get on, though, to number theory. We want it to be a family affair. We want to make certain that students realize that it starts in the primary school and it continues. It does not change. It does not change. First thing that we're going to introduce, what is this rule that I spoke about? 
what is all this when we're talking about rules? Because we said, as long as you enter into the mathematics classroom, we're going to be dealing with numbers. But according to that, we have certain operations in which we operate. So the numbers, first of all, that we get are the digits, and it is zero. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We all know then that we are using our base 10, and everything else is composed from these. And what do we do with numbers? Yes. We use them, so we have our signs, okay, our signs or symbols, which tells us the operation that is being carried out at any particular moment. First thing then we can say, we can add them, we can multiply them, we divide them, and we subtract them. But there is an order and a sequence in which we do these things. And that is the operation, and that is the point at which we want to talk. No, it does not begin in fifth form. In fifth form, we try to crown it off to tell our students to use it. It's not a shocker. It's not learnt when we get into fourth or fifth form. It's learnt right from the very beginning. So, here we go. And normally, the first one we start off with, the laws, okay? is the commutative law, okay, the commutative law. And as early as first form, it is taught. And I must tell you, we are going to try in our government school to make certain that we get students doing an equal amount of mathematics leading right up to fifth form. So it's not when you get into fourth form, you're going to be saying you're starting your work to go and pass an exam. It's a continual process. It starts in first form and it continues right through until we get into our fifth form year. Okay, um, so we have the commutative law. What has this law got to say? And it says the order in which we add or multiply numbers does not matter. Okay, so again, the English language is very much a part of any mathematics classroom. Okay, so the law states then, the order in which we add or multiply numbers does not matter. What do we mean by this? So let us look first of all for an example where we're talking about addition. And we are given the number, let's call it three, and it is plus eight. And we are saying anywhere in this world, anytime you're doing that, if we get three plus eight, it is this, we should get the same answer as if we had said it's equal to eight plus three. Can we do that and see if it's true? Okay, so for our little ones looking to, we have three marbles, we have eight marbles here. Okay, two, four, six, eight. We have eight marbles here. And we have three here. Add them up and see how many we have all together. And if you count with me, we're going to see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, is that equal to, what do we have here? We start counting and it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
All right? And that is what our commutative law would tell us, that the order in which we add numbers does not matter. So even if in the middle of the night, in the middle of a storm, you're given two, you have five, you have seven, and somebody says, give me, and what's the word we use when we're adding things? What do we call it? What term do we use? And you're getting it all the time in your primary school. Do you know that term? Yes, that is true. We say the sum, okay? So when we're adding more than two numbers, yes, we find it, when we're adding, we're finding the sum. So take the vocabulary that goes with that, and that is saying, so what is the sum of these two numbers? And then we can get three. Can we find the sum of those numbers? Would I get the same answer if I was adding two plus five plus seven? Is that equal to five plus seven plus two? And is that still equal to seven plus five plus two? What do you think? Would we get the same answer if we did something like that? And again, okay, let us look and see. I see a lot of people eating plums these days. So if we had two of them here, we had two, three, four, and five here, and we had two, three, four, seven here, and if we had five, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, are we saying that that is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, two? Can we add them and see what we're going to get for the answer here? Okay, so if I went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, 14. Is that equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14? All right, and is that equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14? So the law holds. Commutative law would tell us the order in which we add numbers does not matter. No. So I have done the one for addition. So what do you think I'm going to say? I want you to try the one for multiplication. And you're going to tell me if you get the same rule. I have a studio guest here. So I hope she's going to do the multiplication sum and tell me because I'm going to send you on a coffee break and then we are going to come back and when we come back, my student guest will tell me if the order in which we multiply numbers, if they are the same and it does not matter. All right, so you at home, you can take a break, rest, go and get something, come back again, do want some numbers too because my friend right in the studio here will tell me if when we multiply numbers, the order does not matter. See you in a little while. Carefully read over the sections of your textbook assigned by your teacher and look carefully at the sample problems. Decide if you benefit more by reading before or after the instructor covers the material. To succeed in mathematics, you need to build on what you've learned before. New concepts are added to and build upon previous concepts. It is very important that the early material be mastered thoroughly. Similarly, mastery of material from previous classes makes success in later classes more likely. So continually review and practice concepts from previous sessions. Join us for a new series of Mastering Mathematics, Mondays and Tuesdays, 6.30 p.m. here on ABS-TV. All right, so we are back, and we have just touched one of the rules so far. We have taken our time because we know, yes, 
call your neighbors, call your friends, tell them Master in Mathematics is back on the air. And this time, we are going to make certain that we sensitize the people, tell them it is something they can do. And as I said, yes, I have a student guest, and she's here listening very keenly. She has seen the multiplicate the sum. How do we find the sum of two numbers? Does the order in which it, the operation takes place affect the answer? And we said no. And right away, my guest wants to tell me if the order in which we multiply numbers, if they will affect the product. So that is the word we're going to be using right now. So we have two vocabs already. So for multiplication, what is my example? Yes? Two times six. And six times two. Is that equal to six times two? So, all right, so right away, my friend has told me it is correct. Two times six. Primary school students, what are you giving me the answer as? That is right, it is 12, good. And what about six times two? What did we get the answer to be? 12. So the order in which we multiply numbers does not affect the product. Now, did you hear that name? Product, another vocabulary. All right, so when we use product, what are we talking about? We are multiplying numbers. And parents, aunties, uncles, grannies, never too, learn to, never too old to learn. All right, good. Now, do we have another example? Yes. Right, what is it? Seven times. Seven times three times two. times two. And we want to find out if that would be equal to, let's just move some of these so that we are not confused. So we want to find out if that is equal to, what else did you write? Three times two times seven. Three times two times seven. And would that be equal? Three times seven times two. Three times seven times two. All right, so how did we get that 42? Seven times three, you multiply two first numbers. Seven times three is 21. Uh-huh. 21 times two is 42. All right, did she do it correctly? Yes, good, very good. She didn't know she was coming here for that, you know. She thought she was just here. Okay, 42. And that's equal to? Three times six. Three times two is six. And uh -huh. six times seven is 42. Did she say it right? Again. Yes. Okay. 42. And what are we saying here again? Seven times three is 21. And 21 times two is 42. All right. Give her a round of applause. She did it. Yes. Well done. Okay. So that is what it's going to do. We're not coming to sit by here as if we're sitting on any fence. We're coming to learn, all right? All a part of the exercise. So you can teach your little children. You can teach your neighbor's children. You can tell anybody on the street how we are doing these things. So again, so our commutative law works then for our addition and multiplication. Would it be working for division? Let us find out. Let us see what would happen if we had the commutative law. Okay? Our commutative law. What happens in terms of division? Can I get a number? So, if I start it off right away for you then, if I had 8 divided by 4, is it equal to 4 divided by 8? Would we get the same answer? No. Because if we had to say 8 divided by 4, which we can see like that, is it equal to 4 over 8? And the answer is no. Alright? 
And that is why we say that the commutative law does not work, does not work for division. What about subtraction? Would it be working for subtraction? And again, so we can try. So when we have um, subtraction now, if I had to give you 15 minus 7, would that be equal to 7 minus 15? And again, we can see no, all right? Because we'd be taking you into the realms of negative numbers. Here we'd be saying 15 minus 7 would give you a positive 8. Here we'd be ending up with a negative 8. So we see right away that it does not work for subtraction. And you see subtraction and division walk hand in hand, okay? What do we get here? We have multiplication and addition walking together because multiplication is the form, is the short form of addition. So you're not going to write 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. You're going to say, I have 10 fives, so 5 times 10, and we'll be getting 50, all right? And then you're not going to be minus, 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 minus. You're going to say, how many of them are we dividing? And it's maybe four groups of eight. And then that is how we're getting the answer. So we understand when we're talking about the laws, when we're saying that it does not work. So are we fully adherent? Are we fully understanding the commutative law? Yes. The order in which we add and multiply numbers does not matter. It matters for division and subtraction. The second law I want to tell you about is the associative law. Okay, the associative law. So we're going to be holding on to those two laws to, so that we can say, yes, we know those laws. Commutative law and the associative law we're now going to be talking about. And what it says, the order in which we add numbers in groups of twos does not matter. And again, it works for multiplication and addition. So it did a word that comes in here, the order in which We multiply or add numbers in, and this, these two words are important, in groups of twos. does not matter. So I'm going to leave you to tell me that if I had 2 times 3 times 4, would that be equal to 2 times, open bracket, 3 times 4? And you're going to give me that answer. Or... So that would be for our multiplication. And the second thing I would want you to give me, so for multiplication, and secondly, if I gave you for addition, so if I gave you 5 plus 3 in a bracket, plus 9, would I get the same answer as 5 plus, open bracket, 3 plus 9? I want you to do that for me and to see if that is so. All right? So again, you have a work, some work for me to do in terms of that. 
two laws for today, two laws for today that we are attempting, commutative law and the associative law. We are going to send you home tonight with that little homework. We are going to look and see if you can come up and do the associative law. Okay? Again, it's mathematics. It's not difficult. Do not say you can't do mathematics. Say, I don't have the content knowledge to make me understand how to do this algorithm. There is help. The Antiguan government, in terms of the Ministry of Education, we are going to be playing our part. We are putting in resources. We are putting in people in place to make certain we can have our tutorials. Again, of course, we're going to just get a little change to make certain that we can buy the stuff that we want. And I remind you all the time about this little black boy, okay, five years old. And he went in, in England, yes, and he took the GCSE, which is the same thing like the CXC and pass. It does not go any better than this to tell you age is not a barrier and you are never too old to learn. The more the grannies, the more the daddies and the uncles know the information, you are going to see how whole society will change. Challenge yourself. Tell yourself, yes, we can do it. We do not want to make mathematics just an examination problem. We want you to enjoy and have fun learning the subject. When the exams come, it will be just to show what we have learned. It is not an indictment. It is not a death sentence. So we're going to give you the information. Work with us. Come to the center and you will see we have resources that we will help you to get along with. So until tomorrow, we will be back to give you some more laws. Have a good evening and let us thank our studio guests because poor thing, she did not know that she was coming to be a star on a show. All right, see you tomorrow. <laughs> Join us next time for another in the series, Mastering Mathematics, a production of the Education Broadcasting Unit in the Ministry of Education and the ABS-TV.